very good morning to you dear students welcome back to our wednesday's lecture dear students hope that you all have watched our uh, revision 1 video which was revision of chapter number 1 laws of motion in that video i have discussed all the important definition in the in the chapter as well as another short topics which can be asked in 10 marks exam dear students today we are going to do chapter number 2 work and energy chapters all important definitions and short topics which can be asked in 10 marks exam as i have said numericals from chapter number 1 will be asked in exam so do practice all the numericals of chapter number 1 only chapter number 2 all short answers give reasons distinguish between which are there behind the textbook exercise questions along with your give reasons also go through all these questions properly and learn all these questions properly let's begin with the revision of chapter number 2 work and energy let's be let's start with the definition of work work is said to be done when a force applied on an object causes a displacement of the object so we say that work is performed when there is a displacement of any object as when i was teaching we have gone through three important activities in the chapter as it starts the beginning of the chapter there are three pictures which are placed there which shows us a girl sitting on a floor and studying now as we have discussed before work is not performed by the girl why because there is no displacement so work according to physics is when there is a displacement of an object then only we say there is a performance of work so let's go through the definition again work is said to be done when a force applied on an object causes a displacement of the object therefore formula for work is force into displacement work is equal to force into displacement further what are the different units of measuring the work done we have two important units as cgs unit and si unit first we will discuss about si unit now here we are going to discuss how does a work is calculated in si unit newton and the unit of displacement so therefore the unit of force is newton and the unit of displacement is meter therefore therefore the unit of force is newton meter which is on page number 9 20 in your textbook which is written in yellow as while teaching also i have said this yellow part is very important all important definitions are asked in exam many time so the definition says us that the si system the unit force is newton which is always written by capital n and the unit for displacement is meter which is written by small m therefore the unit of force is newton meter and thus it is called as joules therefore it is called as joules so dear students if you look into the textbook on page number 20 1 joule is equals to 1 newton into 1 meter which is always represented as 1j is equals to 1 capital n into 1 meter let's move to the cgs unit therefore first let's go through what is 1 joules therefore the definition of 1 joule is if a force of 1 newton if a force of 1 newton and the displacement of the object is in 1 meter the direction of the force the amount of work done by the object will be 1 joules so how to remember here we will remember the force is in 1 newton and displacement is 1 meter therefore the work done will be 1 joules so therefore 1 joule if a force of 1 newton placed and the object through 1 meter is the direction of the force the amount of work done on an object will be always 1 joules in cgs system let's discuss 
what is the unit of work in cgs system the unit of work is dyne and that of displacement is centimeter thus the unit of work done is dyne is called as an erg what it is called as an it is called as an erg so therefore let me repeat the definition dear student go through the textbook when i am explaining again the cgs system the unit of force is dyne and that of a displacement is centimeter thus the unit of work done is dyne centimeter this is called as erg what it is called erg when the force and the displacement are in the same direction the work done by the force is called as a positive work done what it is called when it is called as a positive work done when the force as well as the work done is in to the same direction next is when the force and the displacement are in opposite direction the work done by the force is always a negative work done when they are in an opposite direction further when the applied force does not cause any displacement or when the force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other the work done is by the force is zero work done when the force as well as displacement are perpendicular again i am repeating when the applied force does not cause any displacement there is no displacement in the object for an example a girl sitting on the floor she is studying but there is no displacement or when the force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other then the work done will be zero work done let's move to the next important definition dear students there is one question based on this what is potential energy and kinetic energy and write down the distinguish between potential energy and kinetic energy such distinguished type of questions can come in exam do study it properly so what is potential energy first of all what is energy therefore the capacity of a body to perform work is called as an energy what is energy the capacity of a body to perform work is called as energy so further energy is classified into two forms there is potential energy and kinetic energy so let's move towards what is kinetic energy the energy which an object has because of its motion is called as an kinetic energy in my previous lecture i have given you all many examples of of kinetic energy any object which is in motion it stores kinetic energy like a water falling from a very height okay which is moving okay there's a motion that's why it is forming a kinetic energy so what is the formula for kinetic energy kinetic energy is equals to half mv square what is the formula half mv square potential energy which is the second form of energy the energy stored in an object because of its specific state or position is called as potential energy therefore dear students what is potential energy potential energy the energy stored in an object because of its specific state or position is called as potential energy let's discuss some examples of potential energy now the water which is stored in a dam which is into the form of stored water that is it that time it is having a potential energy but the same water when it is falling down from the dam it converts potential energy into a kinetic energy so there are many transformation of forms of energy also which is on page number 25 if you see there is a transformation of energy now one form of energy is always converted into another form of energy i have given you few examples like let's take an example of a firecracker when we burn the firecracker first it gets a light energy as soon as it gets a light energy it start getting heat up so the light energy gets converted into heat energy heat energy makes it more lighter okay the light uh, starts spreading more then the heat energy 
converts into a sound energy and we can hear a loud sound when firecrackers are burst so now here dear students one form of energy is getting converted into another form of energy and with the help of a flow chart it is explained beautifully on page number 25 where electrical energy is converted into heat energy where thermal energy as well as loudspeakers are where like for an example when i am speaking on the mobile phone also we charge the mobile phone now here electric energy is converted into a sound energy we can hear through our mobile phone so these are basic examples where we have we experience how does a different forms of energy is created and how one form of energy is converted into another form of energy now taking this into consideration we can learn our law of conservation of energy the law of conservation of energy says energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one form into another thus the total amount of energy in the universe remains constant this means that we cannot create any energy nor can we destroy any form of energy energy in the universe will always remain constant because one form of energy always convert into another form of energy so that's why it is said that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can be converted from one form to into another thus the total amount of energy in the universe remains constant let's move towards the last topic of this chapter which is power what is power power is the rate at which work is done what is power power is the rate at which work is done on page number 27 there is a formula for power power is equal to work upon time where si unit of work is joules so that the unit of power is joule per second it is called as volt one volt is equals to one joules into one second therefore it is always calculated as one horsepower one horsepower is equal to 746 volt what it is 746 volt dear students do remember all these definitions in this way we have completed all the definitions of chapter number two in short we have done all the revision of chapter number two notes were given to you all again i repeat do check your roll numbers on virtual ed properly and note down your correct roll numbers in exercise questions see there there are question number one which has f questions practice all these questions properly then we have fill in the blanks which answers i have dictated chapter number two you will not do any of the numericals for unit test chapter number one numericals you will do it properly dear students another very important question in this particular chapter is they can ask you for two marks relationship between joules and erg let's discuss this answer again we know that one newton is equals to 10 raised to 5 dynes and one meter is equals to 10 raised to 2 centimeter therefore we know the formula of work is equals to force into displacement therefore work is calculated in one joule force in one newton and displacement in one meter now here we know the value of one newton is 10 raised to 5 times therefore one joule is equals to 10 raised to 5 times into one meter is equals to 10 raised to 2 centimeter 10 raised to 2 centimeter is equal to 10 raised to 7 dyne centimeter therefore one joule is equal to 10 raised to 7 ergs do practice all these important questions 
which are there in chapter number 2 i have already completed revision of chapter number 1 do watch both the videos properly and practice all definitions laws short answers behind question answers properly and study well for your exam have a good day god bless you all thank you